Hello ladies and gentlemen, it's Mike here at Game From Scratch, and today we are talking about SDF, or Signed Distance Field. So this is one of those things that pops up all over the place in the world of computer graphics and game development. I'm going to do a quick overview of how they are used, and then specifically today we're going to talk about a new way you can use them dynamically in the Unity game engine. So first, a bit of an overview of SDF itself. SDF stands for Signed Distance Field. It's a pretty straightforward concept. We'll get back to the, the simple part of the math of it in just a second, but you've probably seen it. Uh, Godot 4 uses SDF for its real-time global illumination. Uh, SDF GI, or Signed Distance Field Global Illumination, it's a technique that makes heavy use of signed distance fields. They're definitely definition is a Euclidean distance based representation of the sign distance of a grid to create this lighting. So it is a system and mechanism for basically uh, splitting the world up and defining the boundaries of objects quickly. So it's being used for lighting solutions. Uh, it is also being used in uh, Magicka CSG. This is from the creator of Magicka Voxel. You can basically think of this as a super powered Boolean modeling tool. And then you can, the sign distance field part of it is when you've got these multiple shapes kind of together, the, the use use SDFs to sort of create like a saran wrap wrapping around the object. That's generally where SDF is used for providing uh, the shapes of things. Are you on the surface, in the surface, or under the surface? And the math behind it, again, isn't really that horrible. One of the best documentations out there that I found in terms of readability is this Zero Wind article. And you scroll on down here, you can see the basic, the most basic sign distance function explained. And this is for a sphere centered at the origin. And, and what a sign distance field basically is, is between one point and a surface, uh, it calculates the the distance between them. So the return value is either going to be uh, zero, which means it's on the surface, uh, negative, which means it's within the surface, or uh, positive, which means how far away from the surface it is. So you see the various different calculations that work out right there. Well, knowing if something is on, in, or under the surface of something is a very useful thing to do. So for example, right now, in the Unity game engine, you can use sign distance fields in the visual effects graph. So if you're making special effects in Unity, you can use this. Unfortunately, you still have to generate that S SDF. And in Unity, uh, SDFs are represented as textures. So how do you go about creating an SDF? Well, you use a tool. So you can use, uh, in the Unity editor, uh, generate SDFs at runtime using API with the SDF bake tool. And you could bake SDFs using Houdini's volume exporter as example. So there are definitely limitations. You gotta pre-bake the signed distance field, and that is not ideal. So what we now have is mesh to SDF. So it's a fast and real-time SDF generator primary for animated characters. The dynamic SDF can be used for all sorts of VFX, enable hair to character collisions, and so on. So this is the new functionality that was just added into Unity from the Unity demo team. This came about from some of the film work they did in the past. Uh, you can see some of the, um, the performance behind it, the documentation, and so on. But let's go ahead and take a look at exactly how this works in the Unity engine. Now, the first thing you're going to need to do is actually set up the SDF support. So what you're going to do is come into the package manager and add the package right here. Now, you add the package via GitHub link right there. So just pass in the GitHub URL and it will install this guy in. Uh, you also want to come over here and potentially import the examples because that's where we're going to start from. There's also an additional um, repository with better examples. We're going to see some of those in action. But once you have SDF enabled, uh, here is a very straightforward example of how it works. So you got this SDF texture. It is literally a texture target for this to all work with, and it links to an SDF that is actually being generated. We're going to show you how that process works, but first we've got this mannequin. You're going to notice this mannequin has a low poly reference inside of it, and attached to that guy is the SDF texture. So again, you're not going to want to do this with a super high resolution mesh. You're going to want to have a lower resolution proxy as a ideally for generating this guy. So you can see SDF texture is hooked up to this guy right here. It's just a game object with an SDF texture script attached to it and the texture defined. So what you're gonna see is this texture is actually being generated. So here we go, this is the texture. You look at it in normal mode, there's nothing really special to it, but let's switch this over to SDF view and there you see what is generated. So this is kind of like a shrink wrap on the outside of this skinned mesh. So if we actually went ahead and uh, play the skin mesh as it's moving. Now this doesn't update in real time, uh, but let me see, come on, show me, show me, come on, there we go, SDF. So you can see as we go through it, this guy, so again, you're not getting a real time update in the editor, but you'll notice as it's moving around, it moves around accordingly. So uh, it's, this dynamic field around the outside edge of your model that you can use for special effects. What kind of special effects? Well, that's where we get into the other project that we've got going on. 
uh, that is this guy right here. And you can see here is a ray marching demo. And it's going to show on the outside edges of it. So blah, 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 blah. So see how they're wrapping to the contours of our model as he's going through it. But probably a cooler example is, was it this one? I think it's this one. So I'm probably wrong. Nope, not that one. But you can actually see here is another result. Basically, you're filling the inside volume of this guy using the SDF field for the uh, boundaries. And then this one, I think, looks the coolest. And this is basically spawning a particle system inside of your VFX system. Again, it is just creating this SDF volume to be using as it. And then the VFX graph itself for this uh, can actually utilize the... Um, the SDF volume for doing special effects like so. So this gives you an idea of the kind of capabilities that you can work with once you've got uh, SDF fields defined. And before the biggest problem in the Unity world was you had to pre-bake them. What you're seeing here, this is an animated mesh uh, that just has the script attached to it. Be this guy right here. Let's scroll down inside of him. Is it the LOD level? Yeah, so here you can see uh, at the LOD level two, you have a mesh to FDF script. So if you want to go ahead and create a sign distance field in Unity, once you've installed this package, basically you just create this new texture and then you can use it in any VFX graph, any kind of way you wish uh, throughout the Unity engine. So no more need to bake it up front. And what this gives you the ability to do, once again, is dynamically calculate these SDF fields. So if you have animations like this, you see obviously the boundaries of this mesh are changing uh, every frame as it's walking, and that is being calculated and updating accordingly uh, in this text. So that is using uh, SDFs directly inside of the Unity engine, um, all via this extension right here. And again, if you scroll on down, there is this example. It's got those three different examples that we showed. Uh, the pink character is a VFX graph effect. The SDF is sampled in the uh, in a position, conformed to SDF, and sample SDF nodes. Uh, the atom is surrounded by green bubbles in the example of ray marching. So how to show how to surround something on the outside. And Sparky is a VFX graph as well, using the collide with SDF nodes. So basically this particle system is inside of the um, the VF it's, it's inside of the volume and it's bouncing off as it goes. So it's showing you three different ways to use SDF fields for real-time special effects. So you can kind of see it right there. It's kind of it's keeping an outline away. So if you had to um, make footprints for an invisible character. You could use it in that regard. Uh, again, Sparky is showing it with um, a particle system inside that is colliding with the boundaries of the SDF node. And then this one is uh, kind of just showing it conforming to the shape of the SDF itself. So there's multiple different ways that you can work with SDFs. So you're seeing basically outside, inside, uh, and on. Uh, as the three ways being demonstrated here. But the biggest new thing here with this new plugin is you can do it all in real time. Now, do keep in mind, again, you're not going to want to send in super high uh, resolution models because it's going to slow things down, of course. Uh, the typical resolution would be a 5 to a five to 8K triangle mesh um, because it is being voxelized and you could definitely slow things down with this extension. Uh, but that, ladies and gentlemen, is SDF inside of Unity. So again, being used in Godot 4 for real-time global illumination, being used in Magicka CSG for, um, you know, Boolean modeling, basically. And it's not as horribly complex as it initially sounds. Again, I would start, if you want to learn more about using SDFs, very useful in... Uh, graphic shaders in the first place. Uh, this is a really solid article to get you up and going. So I will have this linked in the linked article down below. But yeah, you can now use SDF fields dynamically inside of the Unity game engine uh, with this functionality. Pretty cool stuff. Let me know what you think. Comments down below. I will talk to you all later. Goodbye.